Gerardo Rivera, which was their extension of working with the Puerto Rican community as they saw it, but also Melba Tolliver. So Melba at that time had been, you know, she had been tossing around the idea of changing her hairstyle. She was tired, like many of us get, of pressing her hair. She was tired of using wigs and she decided to go natural. And it also was during a time when more women were beginning to embrace, more black women were beginning to go back to being natural. So she switched her hair just before um, going to, um, to go interview Nixon's daughter. And you talk about shake up a room. Um, basically, when she changed her hair, uh, her, her, her one producer saw her and asked, what did she do to her hair? Um, and she, you know, she quickly explained, like, this is, this was my hair. This is what my hair looks like. I'm not going to be straightening it anymore. Um, the other, you know, um, director, when she got back, the news director told her, look, I hate your hair. You've got to change it. Um, and, and you know what? He says, you don't even look feminine. So I don't know how, if, if, if God made me woman, how I don't look feminine and you know, why would she not look feminine? Because she changed her hair to its natural state. They threatened to keep her off the air if she didn't change it back. Um, and then, um, you know, they, she went on and she did the interview and she shot the footage the way she saw fit to shoot it. Um, when she returned, they, they insisted that she either straighten her hair or wear a hat or a scarf. I mean, you that disgusted with black hair that we have to wear a hat or a scarf or a wig to be on TV. You cannot be naturally who you are. That sounds crazy. That sounds absolutely crazy. Well, when they, they took off the air for a minute and um, people got to call them into the station and complaining. And so they had to put it back on the air because, I mean, you know, the thing is, she was a a quality journalist. This was not, you know, this bubblegum journalism where you just look cute and, you know, you have your chest out and you get a lot of viewers. She was she was doing hard hitting news. Um and so again, you know, here's this woman who is a black woman who I mean, we're talking of, you know, top of the line professional here. Um she had at, at one point she started out as a registered nurse. Um she went on to um to be a clerk for a network of news executives for ABC. She, um, she, when the, when the, uh, when there was an employee strike, she anchored for, for five minutes news with, uh, a, a woman's touch. She, um, she, um, was, was pretty much active, um, in um, getting in-house training for at ABC, and she took classes at the Columbia University, New York uh, University. I mean, here is a person. In fact, she got her first big break with the assassination of, of, of Bobby Kennedy for WABC, the local station that asked her to help cover the um, um, funeral that was was done was scheduled to be shown at St. Patrick's Cathedral. This this was this was a real journalist. This is a hard hitting journalist, and at the end of the day. Um, when they finally fell out with, um, Melba Tolliver, it was over her hair. I mean, you talk about a country that pushes this whole, you know, kumbaya, we're open, this is, you know, we're working on tolerance, we like diversity. How can you be diverse if you're not really going to accept what that means? It's, it, d- diversity and conformity are not the same world. You're not, you're not being diverse by making me conform. So I don't know what the hair is going on when, uh, it becomes this big news, um, segment, this new, there was a, there's a news woman, this black news woman decided to break the mold. And I thought this is interesting. How are you breaking the mold by being yourself? And what she did was she decided to wear her natural hair. Her name is Rochelle Ritchie, and she's coming out of of, uh, Florida. And so what she did as a television reporter is she documented her big chop. And so it was, a you know, um, just a, 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 a format where she focused on the new trend of black women going natural and the health issues surrounding the use of chemical relaxers. And um, and people don't understand, you know, we, we really will never know completely uh, exactly how much harm we've done to ourselves by using chemical relaxers. I know the original um, relaxer um, was full of lye, and you couldn't leave that on but a second. 
um, before you absolutely started burning where you end up with actual sores, bleeding sores on your scalp. So here it is, you know, we have, what, three or four decades later that we're still having this same talk. Melba Moore's, Mel, I'm sorry, Melba Tolliver's issue was in 1971. This is 2014. We're still talking about black women's hair. We're still talking about whether or not they have the right to wear natural hair. We still have whites, Europeans, non-blacks suggesting that we look better with wigs on, that we look better with our hair scarf. And, and it's like this, this elephant in the room where people can't see that this is hate. It is absolutely hateful to tell a black woman that you look better with a hat on. You look better with a store-bought wig, with store-bought hair, as opposed to the hair that God blessed you with. Now, there's there's some people who have gotten away with um, being more natural. Um, there's a, a journalist I actually enjoy, Melissa Harris Perry. Um, who wears braids? She's a beautiful black woman, and actually, she's doing a double a, a double um, trauma to to the team because she she um, wears braids and she's brown and she has a lisp, so she's got some Barbara Walters in her, and she um, you know she wears braids. So, but you know, has a very natural, clean, crisp look. She's not you know doing any sort of you know um, this part pent up, this drop purple here, green in the back plus um, a clip and a bond. I mean, this is just a natural sort of, you know, flowing pin back style. Um, very polished, very clean. Um, there's Farida um, Shadia, um, who also wears what looks like to be like twist or, or braids in her hair. Very groomed, very polished. Um, also very p polished, sharp journalist. I mean, you know, she's by no means, um, you know, small chops when you're sitting down talking to her. But... It's really discouraging that it seems like journalism is telling black women, um, you know, if you graduate, that if you wear braids, if you wear Afro or dreads, this equals not being groomed, not being professional, not being clean. And um, realistically, this really reflects a deep-seated prejudice against natural hair, which is a deep-seated prejudice against black women. We can say it or not say it. That's exactly what it is. No one is walking up to Asian women and saying, don't, don't have your hair straight anymore. I needed to, I needed to have some curl to it. No one's walking up to naturally blonde white women saying, Hey, look, look, blondes are out of here. We need you to be brunette by Friday. I mean, this, you know, this is not happening. And if it's happening, I feel sorry for you. You need to fight against it because it's wrong. It is absolutely wrong wrong. So um, I even know that recently there was a whole big um, to do over Gabby Douglas, the um, gymnast, the little girl. And actually a lot of that came from black people dogging her about her, um, basically her, her hair, her ponytail. She had like some sort of extension and then her natural hair was kind of kinky. So she wasn't perm well, but they went on and on about her hair. Now here's a girl making gymnastics history. Mother done sacrificed everything to get her to the Olympics. And all that anyone could talk about, for, you know, just a small segment of people was her hair. And what the media did was pick, pick up that discussion and continue to ask that little girl in interviews about her hair. Very, very frustrating. Very, very irritating. Which is why I asked the question, what the hair is going on? You have Blue Ivy, Beyonce's daughter. You know, Beyonce... I could care less about one way or the other. But I have to respect that she's not beginning to already put stuff on this baby's hair. She's letting her hair do what it wants to do. And, you know, I see lots of other ethnic groups. The little girls have their hair free and loose and blowing. Why can't black children be that way? Why do they have to already start with restrictive hairstyles? I get so sad sometimes. I'm in grocery lines. I see a whole bunch of beads on this little frail follicle and, and all these tight braids. And you can see the little bumps. It's like, let it breathe. A simple band, you know, um, just kind of brushing a soft ponytail is enough. It's growing. You know, the, the follicle is sensitive. The hair is frail. It doesn't require that to be beautiful. And who sets the standards for beauty? Why does everything that has to do with beauty have to fit into one type of standard? Why is straight hair more, far more beautiful than hair that has a rhythm to it, that has a wave to it, a groove to it? 
I, I, I don't I don't really understand that. And I'm really frustrated um, and sad that at this juncture in, t- in 2014, we're even talking about this. We're even putting women under attack with this. Let's talk some reality. The reality is lots of black women, this is from Naomi Campbell, Countess Vaughn, um, these are these are high power women. These are women with some money. Lots of black women are wearing fake hair. Fake hair, fake hair, and to their detriment. You know why? Because you got to put glue in it. God didn't intend for us to glue our hair on our head. To actually glue thirty inches of hair on your head to glue to your scalp. What's not glued, you have to get it sewn in. What's not sewn in, you have to set it on top of your head as a cap. Now listen, I'm not judging anybody. If that's what you want to do, you do that. But um, with the internet, you get to see a little bit of everything. They don't call all kind of people where their sidelines look like bozo, where the hairline goes all the way back to the middle of their head. You know, it don't get too much prettier than Naomi Campbell, um, high-powered model. But her head... It looks just like any chick off the street because her she's had follicle damage, major major follicle damage. Uh, Countess Vine released a video talking about um, being addicted to wearing the weave, not really being able to accept her appearance without the weave, uh, feeling that that she was having an allergic reaction to the glues to the point that she was even oozing and smelling things, and still wouldn't take it off. You know because she just didn't want to lose the look to her detriment. Um, and the list goes on. You know, I'm not going to go through every female entertainer that religiously wears weave and, and, and has damage. But it's not an accident when all of a sudden um, you see a black woman go down to a pixie cut or decides to start wearing a short curly afro. Usually it's a reflection. She's either doing one or two things. She's either committing to go natural or she's been forced to go natural. Because there's still not space in the United States to allow a black woman to be beautiful on her own accord. Just, you know, you're just beautiful. You don't have to have blue contacts in. You don't have to have, uh, you know, supposedly be mixed, have the Brazilian look or lie and say you, you have part Indian in you. You're just a black woman. You're just chocolate and delicious and curvy and brown and your hair curls and sometimes it's disobedient. And that's part of the beauty of it. The, the, that's the that's the part of what diversity is. So, um, all of this leads me to a quote. I teach it sometimes in my class. I like it very much, and it's about um, being an individual. It's about the importance of understanding um, your own self, your own um, independence, your own self identity, having a deep sense of that. Um, and this was it's by E. E. Cummins, and it reads. To be nobody but yourself in a world which is doing its best night and day to make you like everybody else means to fight the hardest battle which any human being can fight and never stop fighting. I love that quote. And part of what I love that quote, part of the reason I love that quote is that's exactly what black women are doing. They're fighting the hardest battle that any human being can fight which is to be themselves. Some of us are doing it and we're winning. Some of us are doing it and we're losing it. But we have to do it. There's nothing left for us to do. Who can we be other than ourselves? Who? Wigs, (laughs) you put that on top of your head. They're not completely a representative of you. It's you hiding behind something. You're not actually being yourself when you're wearing a wig. It's a costume. It's an an addition. I'm not mad at black women for wearing wigs. I understand why they wear wigs. But it would be much better. Much, much better if they were embraced when they make an effort to simply go back to eating. I wrote a book. It's called Simply Lock. And I've had lots of people stop and talk to me and ask me 
you know, oh, how long have you been locked? Oh, your locks are so beautiful. Um, some people's hair looks so nasty. Yours looks so clean. Well, one, I work to maintain my hair. But two, I'm proud it is my hair. I was a person that didn't believe I could ever grow this much hair. But I have. And, um, and I also was a person that, you know, imitated.